Hey, 80s fans, this is Peter Dankelson from Pete's Diary, and you're listening to DC at DH on the DMD Dynamite 80s podcast. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome here to another episode of D&D Dynamite 80s. I'm DH. And I'm DC. And DC, got another great show lined up. Got a special guest I'm really excited about. Absolutely, uh, bro. So without further ado, I'm going to let you introduce Absolutely. our special guest. Yeah, we've got Katie Darrell joining us from Access TV. Welcome. She was with the uh, hey. DMC as well. Yes. Uh, appreciate you taking some time <laughs> yes, with us, Katie. Definitely. Sure. No, thank you for inviting me. Awesome. Um, first of all, let's get some of the basic stuff out of the way a little bit. How did you get involved in this kind of business? Oh, TV, right? Here we go. Yeah. Well, so I actually started in radio, believe it or not. I, um, I was doing radio even when I was in high school. It was a very weird thing. There was a kid's radio station. This was before Disney radio even existed. And I got hired to be a part-time kid DJ when I was like 15 years old. Well, turns out I'm awesome at it. And uh, <laughs> the radio station also had a, um, I think it was called like the Mix FM. And it was like the greatest hits so of the 60s, 70s, and 80s. And they asked me if I wanted to start doing um, Saturday nights uh, over there, like eight till midnight, and then also become like the promotions girl. So I was doing all that stuff towards the end of high school. And then when I went into college um, and then, you know, went to moved over to like their morning show and then went to and then found out that MTV was hiring and did the transition to television and moved to New York for a year and mm-hmm. went back to radio and moved to Dallas. And that's where then I met Mark Cuban, who was starting up a television network called HDNet, uh, the first high definition television network in the world. And it's now called Access TV. And so I, I did the giant TV leap, I guess, right around then when I started working for Mark Cuban. Awesome. One of yeah, the I, I mean, found- you guys, I get paid to talk <laughs> rock and roll. It's rad. It, you can't get any better. No. One yeah. of the things I found interesting was not only did you become a DJ at a young age, but you also started producing. I mean, how was yeah. that transition? I mean, such a such a great on-air personality. And how did you transition that into producing a show as well? Thank you. Uh, to be honest, um, very accidentally, um, you know, it was, so when I was doing radio in Dallas, it was a uh, shock uh, FM talk radio back when FM talk was huge, right? In the early 2000s. And so I think like the station started out, it had um, uh, uh, Howard Stern in the mornings and then our show in the uh, right after Stern, it was called the Ron and Don show with Katie, the chicken hmm. charge. And um, <laughs> when I then, you know, right. But we misspelled chick. So all my business cards said the chic in charge. It, I mean, it's hilarious. <laughs> hilarious. Yes. Um, so we, um, w- when I started working with Mark Cubing, it was actually, I was co-hosting a basketball show with him. I got hired to kind of do um kind of like a Regis and Kelly type thing, you know? Yeah. So it was like Mark and I, and he, he'd, you know, talk about basketball and we talk about the Dallas Mavs. And then I would go out and like interview a Mavs player and do like a silly man on the street bit. And it was there that I said, you know, he, he actually said to me, well, I started this television network. If you have any ideas um, for like music programming, let me know. I was like, oh, I got an idea. <laughs> I, I, I go to concerts and I talk to rock stars and interview them and show their concert. How about that for being original? Yeah. And he said, okay, because he didn't have any programming. So that's how I got to producing is literally me just spitballing with Mark saying, well, I've got this idea. And then he was like, okay, we'll execute it. And I was like, shit. Mm. <laughs> okay like i guess i have to execute this and yeah. and you yeah. know we need to get a host and yeah. i just know that hosts are t- t- terrible divas that you don't want to work with of course so i'll just hire myself <laughs> <laughs> and so i produced and hosted everything i've done over at the network that's awesome that's cool stuff um let me ask you this uh for everybody out there listening that don't know this i read this you ought to be proud i'm that proud I read, you I read actually something. read i'm proud um that uh yeah in her family there's a little bit of uh, some acting that goes on in her oh, family background yeah. have you had any kind of uh, interest in maybe going that route at some point or maybe have you 
So uh, the, I think what you're referring to is my sister-in-law is the uh, lovely uh, Oscar, eight-time Oscar nominated Amy yes. Adams. I think it's at eight right about now. Yes. It's it's, it's an insane number. Yeah. Um, super talented, lovely. Yes. And, you know, to me, I'm like, she's just my sister, you know, like that's my yeah. sister-in-law. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, the, uh, the perk though, the perk is that we're the same <laughs> shoe size. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> and right. and all of her, her, her other sisters are, can't fit into the shoe. So I'm Cinderella. So I get to, I get to, <laughs> There you, the go. there you go. There you go. <laughs> um, which is like just so lovely and so silly and, and fun. Yeah. Um, but you know what? When I was little, I was into acting. I think, you know, ah, oh, I'm 12 years old. I'm mm. going to be in Snow White and did a couple commercials and whatnot growing up in Arizona. Um, yes, I think I, I, I would have liked to have pursued that. But, you know, again, I was growing up in Arizona and you just you have to move to LA. And my family was not one of those families that was like, yeah, let's yeah, pack yeah. it up and we're going to go do it kids. We're going to support her dreams. Um, they won't even buy me a guitar. Cause my dad was like, I've heard you sing and we're not going to do that. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah. So I think, you know, I just, uh, Arizona state university was right there in my backyard and I went there and went to the Walter Cronkite school of broadcasting. And oh, that's wow. how I really got bit with the broadcasting bug yeah, and thought, yeah. you know, well, maybe I'll just be the news lady or something like that. And yeah. then obviously I realized there's a lot more to broadcasting than just, you know, the five o'clock news and went down the, you know, the rock and roll path. Yeah. Well, one of the things I found interesting that I thought was really cool, uh, being eighties fans, we yeah. go and see a lot of the tribute bands that go around. Uh, and I thought it was yes. really cool. The world's greatest tribute bands. Can you tell us a little bit how that came about? Oh, I love that show. So the World's Greatest Tribute Bands um, was an original show on Access TV. It went for about eight seasons, I think about 80 bands, which is insane. Mm, yeah. And you know, a lot of people maybe get confused and don't know the difference between a tribute band and a cover band. Um, a cover band, you know, plays a variety, uh, yeah, like a wedding band, a little bit of this, right. a little bit of that, you know, some My Sharona, but then also a, some slow tunes and they dress just in like sequins outfits. Um, a tribute band is specific to a band. If they are a Beatles tribute band, listen, they have the costuming, they likely speak in an accent. Your Paul McCartney plays left-handed like you do it right. Sure. And so we did the world's greatest tribute bands and each week it was broadcast live from the world famous Whiskey A Go-Go on the Sunset Strip. Awesome. And one night it would be Van Halen. The next week it would be Led Zeppelin then Pat Benatar. And then, you know, uh, it, it was just such a great show. And the talent in these tribute bands. And here's the thing, because people will make fun of a cover band or a tribute band. Mm -hmm. But I will tell you this, in tribute bands specifically, some of these tribute bands are more talented than the real band and yeah. and and you're like what how are they you know how is fake yeah. rolling stones better yeah. than the real rolling stones i'll tell you why first off they're a little bit younger uh <laughs> they uh they've done less drugs most likely they rehearse <laughs> yeah. and play year round whereas like rolling sure. stones get up there and they you know sure they'll be on Put the road for eight months yeah. but then they, they don't pick up, you know, they're not jamming together. Whereas these people are playing year round and rehearsing and practicing the material and Makes sense. Um, not getting lazy. They're looking and they're like, this is Mick Jagger's moves. I'm going to learn Mick yeah. Jagger's moves. Whereas maybe yeah. Mick Jagger now is like, oh, I'm going to mail in the moves. <laughs> so sure. tribute fans are, if you're watching a good one, you might be watching something better than the real thing. And it's cheaper. The tickets are like $25. Hey. Maybe we need to get tribute hosts to take our spots if they work that hard. Yeah, you got that right. <laughs> they might be better. <laughs> yeah. They probably would. They would yeah, be. They would be. They would be. <laughs> um, let me ask this, too. I, I know you've interviewed over your career a lot, a lot of people. Um, what's one that sticks out as your, one of your favorites, if you have one? Oh, gosh, goodness gracious. Um, I'll tell you, I was the most nervous for Mick Fleetwood of Fleetwood Mac. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, I was very intimidated, so? and it's the... And the, the interview, you can still see it's over. If you go to Access TVs, download their app or to their website, you can download the show. It's called At Home and Social. And each week I interview someone different. Like just before jumping on with you guys, I did Steve Stevens, the guitarist for Billy Idol. Um, and he's also the guy that did the guitar solo for um, the Top Gun anthem and won a Grammy for it yes. and everything. Yeah. You know, and, and, and so I do these all the time and they're posted up there so you can watch them, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And Mick Fleetwood is one that I'm really proud of booking the interview, but I'm not very proud of the interview. I was very nervous. I was intimidated. I mean, it's Mick Fleetwood. I, you know, I had a lot of questions I wanted to ask, but you didn't want to be rude and yeah. like into like the dirtiness of the breakups. 
Um, sure, sure. I don't know. I think I think I've gotten a lot better at my interviewing since then. I think I learned from from you know. Li- li- rock stars are humans just like us. Sure, and sure. I think I went in not thinking that about Mick Fleetwood, but uh, I guess you kind of do that with some of your idols, right? Like you do. it's sure. natural. Yeah, uh, but like tomorrow I'm interviewing Ted Nugent and I'm really excited for that oh, one. Wow, because, wow. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, he was one of the first people I interviewed back for my old show on HDNet when I started true music. And so it, it'll just be interesting. And I was really excited then and I'm excited now. So I'm, I'm, I love that uh, my, my enthusiasm for the job hasn't, you know, feigned over the years, but he, um, I mean, he's, he is a legend, whether you agree with his political views or not, like sure. he he's is. rad. Yeah, and so I'm yeah. excited. It's, he's so cool. Fantastic. He's so cool. Fantastic. One of the yeah, things. The Motor uh, City Madman. Yeah. Double live Gonzo. Pull it right. Yeah. Uh, one of the things I find interesting, and I kind of wanted your perspective on this, when you start, like when when we're doing some background and, and getting to know something about you, I found a lot of interesting things. I mean, very amazing person, by the way. Thank you for doing our show. Yeah. What's some of the things that when, when you've kind of done that background work, what, what do you think some of the things that really surprised you were about some of the, the rock stars that you've interviewed? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's true because you do, you have to like, it's weird when I do my homework, you know, obviously I read the press release that the marketing gal, right. you know, sends to you first. You're like, this is what I need to make sure I hit so that they give me the next interview. Right. right. Sure. So I read that. And then you go like down the rabbit hole of like, well, I got to see, you know, what's on Wikipedia, whether it's true or false. I got to read that. Then you kind of go to their own in- in- in web page and see what they're pushing. I kind of pull from that trifecta. And then usually I'll look at like one or two other interviews that they've done right. as well. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, which is, I like doing that because you get to hear an answer and then like you come into the interview being like, you know, when you said that rock and roll in nineties and like, like Ooh, <laughs> you know me. So, yeah, I, I find like that kind of gets you into the trust tree, but, um, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> Just, uh, what, what do you think <clears throat> was some, something that really kind of amazed surprising. you about the rock? Surprise. I mean, I, I, I am actually, it's not surprising. It's just, it's the consistency. The one thing that I seem to find that is consistent that surprises me is, I mean, listen, everyone started at the young age. And and so it's like everyone grew up, you know, picked up the guitar by six or seven and really like was locked in their bedroom doing that at age 13. And that was it. And they've put in the time and the hours. And, and I guess that's what makes these musicians great is they've put in the hours that the same as Tiger Woods. Right. But I'm surprised and a little disappointed and bummed that, you know, someone who picked it up at 20, it, it, you know, I mean, and I know there are people are gonna be like, no, you need to think about such and such band. Yes. I know. Obviously there's exceptions to the rules, but you know, it's, it's a, it's a young person's game. Rock and roll is a young person's game. And I mean, you have, you got to get in there early. Well, it's kind of like, uh, speaking of that, I mean, it, it's kind of like, I mean, look at your background. You started at 15. Yeah. That's just amazing that you started in a yeah. career at 15. At 15, I was working at McDonald's flipping <laughs> burgers. <laughs> right. Yeah. Still, yeah. Yeah. Still trying to figure out. Yeah, well, figure out what well, I was who doing. Am I? But I bet yeah. you make a mad burger right now, though. Hey, I bet you're good do. at it. You can I grill. Do. Yeah. I do. Yeah, you uh, figuring out who you are. Today. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. I think amazing. you know. I was just lucky. Exactly. I think if you if you find what you're gonna do and you find it early, you can hone that skill, and I guess that gives you the uh, advantage. Um, and so I just was lucky that I found something early on that I liked. That's awesome. I like to ask this of all our, or pretty much all the guests. I want to know your opinion. Why in the world is this '80s thing? still around for all these ages to uh, uh, different age groups still enjoy it the 80s i mean it's great listen i mean obviously for the people who like lived through it like nostalgia is fantastic i love the nostalgia the young kids and the fashion and just neon colors right they they, they're drawn to it and they they oh that's so retro that's so old school um they feel like they've discovered something that they can show to their friends and be cool Mm -hmm. the way you know maybe i did being like hey but did you know about classic rock you know as a kid who grew up in the 80s you know being like being able to pull out something from the 60s for my friends to impress them 80s were just a good time it it, it was just a good time the movies were good 
uh, you know, just, just the PG 13, everything was just like PG 13 with a little bit of R sprinkled on yep. top, <laughs> whether it was the rock and roll or whether yeah. it was the movies or whether yeah. it was the TV shows, you know, it was yeah. just, that's, it was such a good balance of fun. Yeah, there you go. So he, okay, she leads me right into this. Okay, let me, let me give you the background on, on this tournament thing. Just tell him. Yeah. All right, here, here we go. We did a show with a expert on 80s movies. So I put together a 10 list, 80s, and he put a list together of 10 of the best movies in the 80s. Well, she, he ended up winning. There was her no list, doubt. Her, her list, she enjoyed his list a little bit more than me. So yeah. there you go. So I thought, okay, I'm going to get you back with this uh, 80s tur music tournament. Okay. Mm -hmm. So here's what we did. We, we, we put this tournament together, the, the list that I showed you or sent to you. And here's what happened. Like we thought, most of them we would not agree on to pass on to the next level or next round. Here's what we did. We decided we would do a coin flip of all things with a 1981 coin. <laughs> real scientific. So yeah, real yeah. scientific background to this. So here, here's the deal. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hope that I, that my list of contenders match up better than his contenders on this deal. So we're each going to have our copy, then, and, yeah. and we're going to let yeah. you go through the yeah, list. Yeah, we're going to let you go through the list. So as you knew, um, yeah, my, we'll start there first. Motley Crue versus Brian Adams to me was no contest. You know who yeah. he picked to go on, obviously, who's in the win, who's in the final is Brian Adams. I didn't pick Brian Adams. Well, th now there's reasoning behind that. I love Crew, don't get me wrong. One of my favorite bands. But events with Brian Adams music the, and stuff just kind of brought there's that to no the way that that Motley Crue that wouldn't move on in the, that tournament. Especially yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll if if it's a special social media vote, Molly Crew's going to win all, all day. I'll give you that one. Okay. So so far we're in good shape there. Uh, Def Leppard versus Phil Collins. I think we agreed on that one. Mm, I thought you had Phil. Maybe I did have Phil. I had Def Leppard, of course. But Def Leppard, I, I I was iffy, so I I would go with you on Def Leppard. And that's the way I was with Crew. I'll all go right. with you. So. Def Leppard. Okay. What do you what, what you got? I mean, I, I would go Def Leppard as well, but see, I'm just, I, I'm a little bit, I'm a heavy gal, you know? Yeah, so, that's me. yeah. There you go. But I did Brian Adams for the shock value. Yeah. yeah. The shock. Rat, rat versus Billy Idol. Oh, I'm going to go Billy Idol all day. We, and you pick Billy and I picked Rat, yep. I think. Yeah. Rat attack. Okay. There you go. Couldn't leave the ladies out. So we had Vixen and Madonna. Madonna, even yeah. though I have to admit, I don't love Madonna. I don't think that she, um, she's not the go. fine wine. A lot of other people believe yeah. she is. Yeah. I, I am in the Ray in the car and material girl comes on and I cringe. I'm like, I just yeah. can't listen to this. There you go. That's, what, that's why I went Vixen. Cause I'm yeah. more of the metal side. So okay. there you go. All right. I, I would put Madonna just because, but I, not cause I like her. Well, <laughs> and here is I liked all her then the versus now. 1981 coin flip and all the tournament that who moved on in the true tournament was Brian Adams and Madonna on that <laughs> side of it. I don't know how, yeah. but there you go. The other side was Twisted Sister versus Michael Jackson starting out. And listen, there, there's, I, I'm, I'm the biggest D Snyder fan out there and I love Twisted Sister, but I yeah. just, I think Mike, I think even D Snyder would say Michael Jackson wins. Now, yeah. if we're talking about his personal behavior and his personal life and that gets into play, then obviously yeah. I'm going to go Twisted Sister. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, on the music. The, the much so, cleaner, yeah. more pure band. There you go. Uh, so I won that one too. You won that one. Okay. So, so I would have I picked about, that one too originally. We're about even right now. Right. We're getting there. So all right, here here's the next one that gets me. This kills me. Bon Jovi or Eddie Muddy? I just don't like Bon Jovi. I, I'm with you. Like I like there's a couple of songs and you yeah. know, wanted dead or alive, but after a while I'm like, ah, I'm just kind of done with Bon Jovi as so well. You but you would have money, money. I'm like Okay. Eddie but Money? I also might be partial because we had the Eddie Money, real money reality show on Access TV. So yeah. I got to know yeah. and meet Eddie Money. Yeah. So and Eddie Money rocks. Yeah. Okay. I can see it. 
Okay. He's got two tickets to paradise. Like, yeah, what more do you need? No, that's Besides true. That's a cheeseburger to go with. Uh, yeah, yeah, we need three. We need three <laughs> tickets to paradise yeah. so we can yeah, all there go. We go. We're yeah. all out, yeah. and I'll cook the burgers. All right, there you go. <laughs> then the next one is, and this is probably going to be one of your favorites because I know you've done an interview with one of these guys before. Poison and, Ke and Kenny Loggins matched up. I okay. had Kenny Loggins. I, this, this is hard. Yeah. I like Poison. I'm a rocker yeah. girl, yeah. and I love yeah. Ricky Rocket because he's on the Top sure. Ten Reveal on Access TV every Sunday right. at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. You guys That's tune in right. for new episodes. I love him. Uh, but, I mean, Kenny Loggins. I mean, didn't he bring us the Danger Zone? He did. And a lot of other great soundtrack things. Footloose, like the soundtracks yeah. of the great 80s movies. Footloose. But it's Poison. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm gonna go Kenny Loggins. I'm gonna oh, do it. That's another one. Oh. So I beat you on the on the music deal. Oh wait a minute. Well, okay, yeah, we both picked. Yeah, Van we Halen. picked. Van. Well, and here's our number one versus sixteen down here: Van Halen versus Lionel Richie. That was a no. no Halen brainer. for the win. I'm gonna take them yeah. in every bracket and the track. And I trophy. think we all agree on that. Van Halen's the ultimate okay. Champion. So <laughs> to put this to rest, we have for the original final championship. I don't. It's embarrassing. Van Halen <laughs> versus Brian Adams is no contest to me. Van Halen. The champs <laughs> of all champs will be Van Halen. But see, I had to, set up, I, I had to yeah. set up the softball for Van right. Halen because, you know. I guess. Yeah, so, you know. There you go. So it, let me let me ask you this, though. In all honesty, what if it had ended up Van Halen and Motley Crue? Oh, my gosh. Oh, I'd still go. I'd go Van Halen. I'd go Van Halen. Well, and that's what I had in the final. But on mine, it was Van Halen versus Motley Crue with Van Halen winning. That's what I would have went. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I that, that's a good pairing. Bracket. That's a head-to-head. -head. That's a bill I'd see. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, so whoever put the bracket together, that was a wonderful. They setup. did a good job. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome for that. So, so anyway. Uh, Thank you for putting that to rest. So yeah. uh, would you agree that I have won no. the music? Yeah. The music I need to reach out. <laughs> yeah, right. So as we get ready to wrap up, though, in yeah. all seriousness, yeah. Katie, if you would, would you share with our listeners uh, where they can get your information and see you and shows and up all that events, great stuff? Anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, first and foremost, you know, you, you log on to my social medias, right? At Katie Darrell, K A T I E. D-A-R-Y-L, at Katie Darrell. That's my Facebook. That's my Twitter. It's my Instagram. You might as well follow them all because they're all a little bit different. I don't do one of those things where I just drop it and it goes to everything. I right. do individual stuff. If you're looking to chit chat, Twitter's the place to go for me. That's where I interact the most, you know, one-on-one -on -one like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you should go over to Access TV and make sure you download our app and get Definitely. familiar with our schedule because I do so much with the programming over there. Every Sunday night, we have new episodes of the Top 10 Revealed. Yep. Um, it's at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. This is your traditional, you know, Top 10 countdown list. So it could be Top 10 80s movie soundtracks, Top 10 90s breakup songs, Top 10 songs about murder for Halloween, <laughs> right? And we have all these celebrity guests commenting on it. That was a yeah. real episode. Yeah. So you'll That's see really D. Cool. Snyder, you'll see Ricky Rocket, yep. you'll see Lita Ford, you'll see, you know, all these great people talking about the list. And so it's really fun and fast paced um and it's very add format like you'll look you'll be watching it'll be at number 10 and all of a sudden it's at number one and you're like how did i just spend a half hour yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, um, and then obviously just go over to the Access TV website or like I said, download the app or go to our YouTube channel because every week on Fridays we do um, music news for a show called Music High Five that I host and produce. Uh, every Thursday we do At Home and Social. That's a 20 minute in-depth interview with a different artist. Um, you know, everyone from Ted Nugent to Steve Stevens to Mick Fleetwood. Um, and then, yeah, I'm all over the place. I've, I I think I need a raise. Now that I think about yeah. it, I need a raise. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah. So whoever's out there listening that works with Katie, she needs well, a raise. Since, since she was the producer that hired the individual to host the show, she can give herself a raise. Right? That's true. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You know, I, I need to talk to way. myself about this. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Make an appointment with yourself to do that. Uh, yeah. By the way, before we get you out of here, I'm, uh, we lost a great one, Meat Meatloaf. Um, yeah. Final, give, give us some words on, did, did, first of all, did you ever meet him? I did not meet Meatloaf. Okay. That sounded weird. Um, yeah. I've never <laughs> met Meatloaf. Right. Um, you know, I mean, listen, that is a guy that, ha I mean, the singing voice, the power of those lungs. 
Um, I mean, such a force of nature, mm -hmm. a sweaty force of nature, but you know what? I like that people would make fun of how sweaty he is, you know, as a sweaty meatloaf and you know, Very what? Passionate. That's, Very a guy passionate that's putting it, yeah. that's a guy that's putting his all into that's it. Right. And, yeah, and, uh, and there's no vanity involved there when you're just like, I just get out here and I'm just going to rock and roll and I'm going to wail and scream and just be a great yeah. performer. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Big loss. Awesome. Okay. Hey. Thank you so much yes, for your thank time. Thank you so much. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to join us. Most definitely, you guys. Well, thanks for having me and uh, keep on rock and rolling and stay safe out there. Okay. Yeah. Hey, you. we'll check back in with you at some time. Thanks. Thank you. Cool. Awesome. Bye, right. guys. Right. Bye bye. Bye.